People have always been enchanted by the beauty of flowers. It's not surprising that these jewels of nature, often in artificial form, are used in decorative objects and in arts and crafts projects. Paper flowers last forever, and you don't have to remember to water them. These flowers are made of saw paper. The saw tree is a variety of mulberry which grows abundantly across Southeast Asia. For more than 700 years, villagers in northern Thailand have been using saw bark to make paper and with that paper, crafting items such as umbrellas, fans and flowers. They soak the dried bark in water overnight to begin softening it up, boil it over a wood fire for four hours, then soak it again overnight. All this softens the bark into fibrous pulp. Next, they soak the pulp overnight in hydrogen peroxide to whiten it. Then they rinse off the bleach, which would interfere with the dyeing process later on. Workers discard any discolored pieces. The goal is to make each sheet of paper evenly white, so that it absorbs colored dye uniformly. They load the pulp into a mill, which grinds it up and mixes it with water. This process, which takes about half an hour, transforms the pieces into soft, fluffy and very soggy fibers. What was once tree bark is now ready to be processed into paper. Every single sheet is handcrafted on fine mesh screens. They submerge a screen in water, then drop in roughly 400 grams of fibers. They manually agitate the water to spread the fibers in a thin layer across the screen. Then they slowly lift the screen out of the water, press the surface by hand to smooth it out, then stand the screen in the sun for three to four hours, flipping it a few times until the fibers dry into a solid sheet of paper. To color the paper, they fill a basin with hot water and add a chemical dye. They test the color, and if it's just right, they submerge the sheet, which absorbs the dye instantly in a consistent shade across the sheet thanks to the uniformly white base color. They hang the sheet outside to dry in the sun. In three or four hours, the paper is ready to bloom. They cut out flower shapes with a hand-operated press that stamps a sharp metal die through the sheet of paper, the way a cookie cutter slices through a sheet of dough. Each shape will be a layer of petals in a flower. There are dyes in various shapes and sizes. However, the petals they produce are flat, not very lifelike. So workers place one petal at a time on a flower-shaped mold and stamp it with a hot press. This permanently shapes the petals to the contour of the mold, much the same way a hot iron presses clothes. Then it's assembly time. To make a rose, they mount a white ball made of foam or flour and glue onto the end of a 7 centimeter long wire. They fold the inner petals over the ball and pinch them together to create the center of the rose. Then thread four to five petal layers of the same size on the wire, bending and pinching those as well to form the rose shape. Once the petals are complete, they finish off with a green paper leaf at the base. To make a daisy, they take a flat flower and glue a brown paper dot in the middle. Then they glue another flat flower beneath it and a leaf base beneath that. To make another type of rose, they gently twist the tips of the petals. Even though they're made from trees, these artificial flowers are environmentally friendly. The saw's severed branches and stripped bark grow back quickly, providing a renewable supply of raw material for crafting forever in bloom paper bouquets.